In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. I've been seeing a lot of videos about the movie 28 Days Later and the fact that it is not available to stream anywhere and apparently all of the physical media is completely sold out. This is why we don't rely on streaming. This is why we don't trust them because they can take it away at any point in time and you never own it. Just buy physical media. 28 Days. Ooh, pretty. With all the alternate endings you don't get when you stream the frickin' movie, you get whichever one they decided to upload. And 28 Weeks. Plus, you don't get all of the cool special features that come on these things. It's really interesting. All the behind the scenes. All that cool stuff. Just buy movies, guys. Fuck streaming platforms. Not to mention, aren't you always disappointed by their selection anyway? Yeah, it's a shame that this is starting to happen more and more with movies. In fact, where I'm from, there's a lot of stores like Best Buy, Walmart, Target that are starting to slowly get rid of movies altogether and not accepting any to come in. And I have a feeling it's going to be a digital world pretty soon, sooner than later. Do you like physical or do you like digital? Leave a comment letting me know because I am interested. I know a lot of people that love physical movies and I know a lot of people that love digital only. So it can be up in the air. Let me know. So I just opened a package of Stop and Shop Nature's Promise Organic Free Range Chicken. Mm -hmm. It says may contain up to 5% retained water. Chicken raised with 100% fed diet, no antibiotics, no added hormones. Federal regs prohibit the use of hormones in poultry. Okay, that's not my concern. All right, so let's look at the date. Let's look at the date. Sell by February 21st. Okay, so we're all right. We're all right. All right. And then I opened it up. And so I had seen a few videos on good old TikTok and um, uh, talking about lab-produced chicken. So here is exactly what it looked like when I opened it up. Oops, I'm sorry. So here we go again. All right, so here's what it looked like. Um, pretty sure um, chicken isn't threaded or whatever this nonsense is. So yeah, it, it continues. It continues. I have yet to do the other one but um yeah i'm pretty sure this isn't chicken i i'm i'm no chicken expert over here and i do see like a ton of fat that's disgusting so nobody actually butchered this they just kind of like put it in here all right so let's look at this one because i have no idea what's going on with this guy all right, this one looks semi-normal, but yet again, I have yet to, like, cut open into it. And I hate to be gross, but I don't really care at this point because it's all gross. Yeah, I'm not, I, can't, I don't have a thing. I don't have a thing to hold the camera. I'm not, I'm not a freaking TikToker. But I wanted to show this to people. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> I'm going to move on. Yeah, go ahead. Stare at it some more. That's cool. I don't know what's going on there. That's not normal chicken. I have messed with raw chicken a plenty of times, and it should not look like that. That is so fibrous and looks not normal at all. Please be aware of what you're eating. That's, that's very unsettling. Okay, so the average salary is what, like $100,000? What? What's Did you just hear this motherfucker? What's the average salary? Bro, probably like what? 20, 30K, bro? No way. Bro. Shut the fuck up. Are you fucking crazy? What's the average salary of a human being? Bro, 30, 40K, bro. Are this thing What? Crazy. Wait, it's really 40K? Bro, bro, that's what I say. Ain't it, bro? See, that's what I say. You come from... To, when I, I say I'm familiar with Aiden Ross. I'm not like a huge supporter. I just ran across this video scrolling through my TikTok and I just was baffled that this individual thought $100,000 was average salary. 
Honestly, 30 to 40 is not even average salary. It's a little less than that here in America some in, in some places. So this guy really needs a reality check. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be doing a live test to see if Google is always listening on your microphone. This is the subject we're going to talk about, OK? We're going to go to a few websites and see if we can find any advertisements for this right here. Now, I don't own one of these. So it's not going to be on any of the websites that we, it shouldn't be on any of the websites that we go to. Let's take a look at these websites and see what the advertisements are on them. The sponsored content here is from Outbrain. Obviously not what do we have, what we have written on our piece of paper here. Uh, this one's an advertisement for, what was that? Fancy pants taste on underpants budget. Okay. That's not what we're looking for. And here we have a breast cancer ad. I don't have breast cancer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close all the browsers and then we're going to talk about this subject for a couple of minutes. All right. So dog toys. I mean, I want to I want to buy some dog toys for my dog. OK, because I love my dog and he deserves all the best toys in the world. So maybe we can find him some really nice toys for some really nice toys for dogs. I think that'd be nice near me or affordable dog toys. That'd be really good for me because as a consumer, I'm looking for the most affordable uh, items that I can get for my for my pooch. All right, guys, I think that's that's plenty. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get back online and see what we got here. First website up. Oh my God! It's right there. There's dog toys right here. Well, everybody, I think that that is conclusive. I've had this happen to me a great number of times. Whether I'm using my cell phone or having a conversation with some friends and next thing you know you ha you have YouTube playing on in the background and an advertisement comes up of what you were talking about this happens a lot of times for me and sometimes it even happens when i just think about a certain product it will advertise it i swear i have not opened my mouth and mentioned it or any of that but it'll be there it'll be in the advertisements <laughs> that's crazy do any of you guys have this problem have you experienced this or maybe it's just a coincidence but I've definitely had stuff like this happen before hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you take a look at this graph here you'll see that 13% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed while a whopping 80 plus percent of the viewers that watch my videos are not subscribed but keep coming back for more. So it would be a huge help to me if you subscribe to the channel and it would be easier for you to receive my content that I upload every day. What if I told you there was a theory for what happened to your phones this morning at 4 o'clock and it was pretty nefarious? The theory goes that there was a corrupted file that was added into the AT&T update that took over at 4 o'clock this morning. You see, the updates go into servers way before they're meant to update, that way they automatically update. What if that line of code was actually phishing software? You see, AT&T was directly affected, but there were a lot of other phones that were connected that don't have any attachment to AT&T. What if every time your phone was on roaming, you connected to an AT&T tower with this update, or every time that you use a business's Wi-Fi that was mobile Wi-Fi that was connected to the tower, then your phone automatically received this line of code. Then whoever put the line of code in, put the kill switch in. It blocked the mobile reception from your phone so it looked like there was no service. You see, that would help explain why two people on the same plan, one will have service and one won't, even though they had the same phone company and it's not AT&T. Then it goes on to explain that once AT&T claims that they fixed the problem, they removed the code, the damage has already been done. That code has already been put into your phone. Now that you got your phone back, you're going to log into your bank account first. You're going to log into your Facebook. You're going to go check your TikToks. You're going to check all your stuff to make sure everything's still secure. That's when this line of code gets active. Remember, you hooked to the tower that had it. Now it's in your phone. You can't get rid of it. Every keystroke you enter is getting sent to a server. Your information's being stolen. That's just a theory that's going around, but it does oddly make sense why uh, an AT&T issue is affecting multiple other phone carriers. So now I want your opinion. Could it have just been a random server error? Or is this the largest and most elaborate heist the world has ever seen? Because I promise you, when your phones came back up, at least half of you all checked your bank account first. Dang, I heard about this and I thought to myself, wow, that might have been the reason why everyone was driving so normal <laughs> because they weren't looking at their phones for once. Uh, but all jokes aside, I kind of see where this guy is coming from and I agree to an extent 
It, it could be a possibility. But the fault in this theory is that would require you to log in to your information. And most apps, unless you have that stuff not saved and you're logging into it each time you access it, Facebook, Instagram, all of the things, even your bank account, normally that stuff's already been saved into your phone. So you don't actually have to re-enter that information in. So to say that they're taking all your keystroke inputs and everything is kind of not quite right unless you're doing it manually every time. I don't really see this being the case, but you can let me know in the comments of what you guys think. Spasiba, like, thank you, Alec, for, for those words. And uh, I think uh, I speak on behalf of uh, all our crew and uh, um, say hi. It does look like she has hairspray in her hair. I cannot guarantee or confirm if this is a real or fake video as far as them being in space. You guys, if you've watched my videos enough, you, you know what I, my conception of space is. I think that a lot of stuff that NASA shows is fake. But I, would st I still have some questions. I understand that everyone's shirts are tucked in and everything like that. But if, if her hair is capable of lifting up so much, I feel like the collars of their shirt would also lift up if they're not buttoned down. Uh, there would be a lot of more free-flowing movement happening in no gravity. Uh, and, then, and her hair does seem a little too stiff. I might be overthinking it, but leave a comment on what you guys think because I... I don't really necessarily believe this. Ja sit maistetaan. Hmm. On hyvä. I played one of his videos a couple of days ago, and I'm pretty certain it's fake. This one was even more confirming for me that it's not quite real because of two things. When he telekinetically flicked the, the cap off of the bottle, you could hear the impact of the flick. Whether he had a separate scene or something that flicked it, you could hear an audible flick on that cap. Another thing is why didn't he continuously try to move the cap when it was off of the bottle? He could have tried to put the cap back on the bottle, move the cap around on the table. There could have been a whole bunch of other things that he could have done other than flick the cap off, in my opinion. I think a lot about what they tell us about dinosaurs are a lie. Ah, oh, there's museums! I know, and every single dinosaur you see in a museum is a model because the actual bones of dinosaurs cannot be on display because they are too radioactive. So any dinosaur bone you've ever seen, any dinosaur bone you've ever seen, this is a fact, is a model. And most of these uh, dinosaur recreations are made in China. And then on top of that, you know, Alex, we have these bones. Yeah, I do believe there's old lizards. I believe there's alligators. I do believe there's old big animals, but that they, tell, they told us all about the dinosaurs. There's a thing called the Bone Wars. It was Edward Cope. And in the Bone Wars, there was these, they were like the, First people to discover bones, and it was like in the 1890s. And you have to really get into the weeds, but they would just classify. They'd find like a tooth, and they'd be like, this is a stegosaurus. Then all that. <laughs> right, right. And then later on, they said, oh, half the dinosaurs, they said, were fake. So my point is, the original people that started finding dinosaur bones, not till like the late 1800s, that's when we first found dinosaur bones. All of a sudden, we started finding them like crazy, but all, the, all of our ancestors never really had dinosaurs. And dinosaurs aren't in the Bible. Not that the Bible is 100%, you know, if you take the Bible 100% literal, there's like dragons in the Bible. But the idea that they had all these prehistoric dinosaurs, I don't vibe with that like they tell us. This is interesting because I'm hearing more and more about people not believing in dinosaurs. I myself, I do believe that there was dinosaurs millions of years ago. I mean, of course... The times have changed, things have changed. Whether there was people or not with dinosaurs, I also think there were. But I do know some people in Kentucky that actually excavate dinosaur bones and photograph them. It's their job to do that. They're photographers. And they've 
seen some pretty interesting looking skulls and things like that that were confirmed dinosaurs. So I don't know if they are or are not, but I do believe that they are. What do you guys think? Dinosaurs are real. Dinosaurs weren't real. Have you heard of this song that's been scientifically proven to reduce levels of anxiety by 65%? What does this song even sound like? So this song is said to be the most relaxing song and it's actually created by neuroscientists to decrease levels of anxiety to anyone who listens to it. But what's even crazier, the University of Pennsylvania actually wanted to put this song to the test and they had people listen to it and within only three minutes of listening to the song, these people's anxiety levels decreased 65%. And they even found that listening to this song is actually better than some forms of anxiety therapy. So what's the song called? So the song is called Weightless by Marconi Union, and this is what it sounds like. It's an eight-minute song. It's very slow. It's a very slow burn. I'm sorry to feel a little more calm. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit. It's a lot of the same throughout all the eight minutes. But people say only three minutes is required to decrease your anxiety. Oh, wow. I'm feeling good. It is pretty calming. I feel like this is like straight out of like Dune, the movie. Uh, like something yeah. very like majestic, sci-fi. Sci That's a good one, yeah. I would love to hear if people are getting more calm listening to this because I, I feel like this is helping. I don't know. It didn't really calm me when I was listening to it, even though it wasn't purely listening to the track itself. Um... I do think that there is certain songs that can relax and can calm the mind. What do you guys think? Was that entertaining to you? To me, that kind of sounded like an old PlayStation startup sound. But I don't know. It didn't really do much for me, but it might have you. So let me know in the comments. Ever wondered how a cartoon could eerily echo future realities? Did Lady Gaga get her inspiration for her Super Bowl halftime show from, of all things, The Simpsons? With uncanny accuracy, four years ago, the show actually predicted she'd fly through the air. The Simpsons have baffled us with their knack for predicting the future, stirring both awe and controversy. Good lord. Flu germs entering every orifice in my head! Yeah. As we peek into their crystal ball for 2024, let's unravel the mystery behind their prophetic visions. Oh, an English boy, eh? You know, we saved your ass in World War II. Yeah, well, we saved your ass in World War Three. That's true. The predictive power of The Simpsons. For over three decades, the Simpsons, a seemingly innocuous animated sitcom about a middle-class American family, has been at the forefront of not just entertainment, but also astonishing clairvoyance. The show, created by Matt Groening, debuted in 1989 and quickly became a staple of American culture. However, its uncanny ability to predict future events has turned it into a subject of global fascination and speculation. The predictive phenomenon began gaining traction with some of the early forecasts that astonishingly materialized years after being humorously depicted on the show. Perhaps one of the most famous predictions came from the episode Bart to the Future, aired in 2000, which depicted Donald Trump as the President of the United States. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute. Fast forward to 2016, and this satirical prophecy became a reality, leaving audiences bewildered by the show's predictive insight. Another startling prediction involved the 1997 episode When You Dish Upon a Star, which featured a sign reading 20th Century Fox, a division of Walt Disney Company. This was a full 21 years before Disney actually acquired 20th Century Fox in 2019. The merger was a significant entertainment industry shakeup, predicted by a throwaway gag on the show. The Simpsons also eerily foreshadowed the 2014 outbreak of the Ebola virus in the 1997 episode. Lisa's sax, Marge offers a sick Bart a book titled Curious George and the Ebola Virus. While the Ebola virus was known before this episode aired, its specific mention 
and the subsequent major outbreak years later was a spine-chilling coincidence. In the realm of technology and social trends, the show has been equally prophetic. The 1994 episode, Lisa on Ice, featured a smartwatch-like device decades before the advent of wearable technology. Similarly, the 1995 episode Lisa's Wedding, You'll always be my little girl, hmm, showcased video calls, a technology that has become a staple of modern communication, especially highlighted during the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking of the pandemic, the show's prediction of a global health crisis is arguably one of its most disturbing forecasts. The 1993 episode, Marge in Chains, featured a storyline about a flu virus originating in Asia and spreading rapidly worldwide, eerily reminiscent of the COVID-19 outbreak. This time is that the iconic TV show eerily predicted the outbreak of the coronavirus. Even the realm of sports and entertainment hasn't been immune to The Simpsons' prophetic gaze. The episode, The Cartridge Family, aired in 1997, predicted the halftime performance of Lady Gaga at the Super Bowl LI in 2017, including her aerial descent onto the stage. Did Lady Gaga get her inspiration for her Super Bowl halftime show from, of all things, The Simpsons? With uncanny accuracy, four years ago, the show actually predicted she'd fly through the air. Just AI and automation, a future foretold. In the ever-evolving tapestry of The Simpsons, a thread that stands out for its prescience and relevance is the show's commentary on artificial intelligence, AI, and automation. So, uh, you guys are my new co-workers. The show, with its typical blend of humor and satire, has ventured into the realm of AI and robotics, painting scenarios that once seemed fantastical, but are increasingly becoming our reality. As we dissect these predictions, it becomes imperative to juxtapose them against the backdrop of current technological advancements, exploring the ramifications for the workforce and society at large. One of the most notable episodes in this context is Them Robot, aired in 2012, which depicts a future where robots have replaced human employees at the Springfield Nuclear Power Plant. The episode humorously explores the consequences of such replacements, including increased efficiency, but at the cost of human employment, and the unpredictability of AI behavior. This storyline doesn't just serve as a piece of futuristic satire, but mirrors the anxieties and developments we observe in today's world. The trajectory of AI and automation technologies has been on an exponential rise, from manufacturing lines that are predominantly automated to sophisticated AI systems capable of performing complex tasks. The parallels between the world of The Simpsons and our reality are uncannily close. Homer, when am I getting my power drill back? AI's application has permeated various sectors, including healthcare, finance, and customer service, automating tasks that were once the sole domain of human intellect and labor. The implications of these advancements are profound. On one hand, AI and automation promise enhanced efficiency, accuracy, and the potential to undertake tasks beyond human capability, such as analyzing vast data sets within seconds. On the other hand, they pose significant challenges particularly in the realm of employment. The fear of job displacement due to automation is not unfounded. According to a report by the World Economic Forum, the rise of machines and automation could displace 75 million jobs by 2022, even as it creates 133 million new ones. This shift necessitates a reevaluation of skills and education to prepare the workforce for the jobs of the future. Furthermore. The Simpsons touches on the unpredictable nature of AI, a theme that resonates deeply with the ongoing discourse around AI ethics and control. The episode humorously showcases robots going rogue, a narrative that, while exaggerated, underscores the real-world concerns about AI systems acting in unintended ways. Can they climb stairs? With great difficulty. I'm down! The development of AI governance and ethical guidelines has become a crucial focus for researchers and policymakers, aiming to ensure that AI technologies are developed and deployed responsibly and for the benefit of society. The societal implications extend beyond the workforce. AI and automation are redefining human interaction, leisure, and even our conception of creativity and authorship. From AI-generated art and music to algorithm-driven content on social media, the boundary between human and machine creativity is blurring. 
This raises questions about the value we place on human creativity and the ways in which we interact with technology in our daily lives. The Simpsons, through its satirical lens, invites us to reflect on these developments, encouraging a dialogue on how we envision the future of AI and automation. It pushes us to consider not just the technological possibilities, but also the ethical and societal dimensions of living in a world where AI plays a central role. These can never match. Hounds! Is it pure coincidence or are the actors and actresses and famous people that do their stunts just emulating what they've seen on The Simpsons or is The Simpsons really predicting the future? I mean, there's so many episodes that you're going to, you're going to hit the hammer right on the nail at least one time, but as many times as The Simpsons has predicted, that's a lot. I mean... There's other shows out there that, that's been around a lot longer than The Simpsons. Like, take Star Trek, for example. There's been a lot of things that we're slowly getting that's within the realm of Star Trek. So, is Star Trek predicting the future as well? Or is it just purely coincidence or science fiction that was made using the thought process of real science. Let me know what you guys think on this kind of stuff because I find it fascinating and interesting, but I also find it just almost purely coincidental. So you're saying that they can grow a craft in space? Yes. And how prevalent do you think this is amongst extraterrestrial civilizations that are advanced enough to travel here? I think it's a common thing. Um, you know, they learned how to, you know, produce gravity, uh, a gravitational field. You know, an electromagnetic field that en envelops the craft and the person so they have their own atmosphere and their own, you know, gravity. And that's why they can, you know, go a million miles an hour and turn in a 90 degree turn because they're in their own gravitational force. Hmm. You know, that has nothing to do with a planet or anything else around them. I guess one of the things that, if we're going to really get speculative here, people might wonder if the craft would become sentient and then perhaps turn on its owner at some point if it wasn't feeling respected, if there could be some danger in having a being with free will that is your spaceship. That's, this is where it gets really interesting. The craft is you, so you are the craft. Now, if you are suicidal then the craft will be suicidal. Hmm. If you are having a good time, then you're, the craft's going to be happy too. And it feels this way on a craft. You can actually feel this back and forth. You know, it's not operating really on its own as much as you think. It is, uh, it is its own sentient, but it, it only feels, you know, your, your emotion. Wow. You know, which is really neat. I, I've been on craft before where... I felt like, uh, the best way I could put it is, um, I, th I felt like it was my pet dog because it was just so funny and cuddly and hilarious. And, wow. But at the same time, it was very obedient, like a dog. It would never turn on its owner, you know, although some dogs do. You know what I'm getting at. I'm getting right. at that point where, you know, it's a very beautiful connection between the beings and their craft. Hey, anybody that's watched my videos long enough knows that I'm pretty into the idea of a spaceship being a bio ship. I think that that is a really good concept of technology that we have no control over yet. But if there is extraterrestrials out there, that would probably be what they would use. I, I think that it's an interesting concept. And I'm wondering if maybe one day we'll make something like this ourselves which will be a little scary if we do because then it's creating another living organism for our own benefit, basically. Now leave a comment down below on what you guys think because I think it's pretty fascinating and I do kind of think that that is what aliens or extraterrestrial or interdimensional species probably do use such technology. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.